Wow, all right guys, this is exciting. Mojang have added a new block to the game. Another one for the 1.16 update. You know, I thought they were done with the update. I thought that was it. Um, yeah, there's a new block called Cracked Nether Bricks. Now, technically it's been in the game for quite a while, but I just discovered it today. <laughs> Somehow I missed this one. Uh, I knew about the chiseled one, but I didn't know they added this. So you just take uh, you take the regular uh, nether brick and you smelt it. Can't craft it, that's probably why I didn't see it. Oh, look at this! The cracks are in the exact same place on every block. Now, if you guys were worried about the ender porters that I had forgotten about them... <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to get ender porters all around our world. Trust me, it just takes a lot of time to set these up. So I'm trying to do like maybe one an episode. Uh, but I gotta like dig the tunnels, run the redstone, hundreds of blocks. That's actually surprisingly uh, time consuming. <laughs> but we got one over here now. We got to build a building for this as well uh, and probably add a lot more to make it cool. But for now, we hit the button, takes us to our guardian farm. So we can go to our guardian farm and back now. Look how fast that is too, that's insane. Yeah, so to give you an idea of what's happening here, we're just suspending our ender pearl in the bubble column and then whenever we want to activate it, we'll teleport. And we've run redstone hundreds of blocks to different locations in our world so that we can teleport hundreds of blocks at the press of a button, basically. So that one takes us all the way to over here. We also had another one that we set up previously. This takes us to our stronghold, which is... Uh, few hundred blocks away as well and basically you just load the pearl hit the button and then you go back so this one it takes a couple seconds to activate um we tried to make like an instant wire using trip wires but i'm no i thought it was a little bit slow because the chunks were loading and there was a delay but now i'm realizing it's probably got a little bit of delay in the wire itself it wasn't instant after all because this one seems a lot faster to me yeah, so for this Ender Porter, we just went for the old school instant wire. This has been in the game for many years and probably won't break anytime soon. Uh-huh. Yeah, so last episode, I introduced the big project plan to you guys. The lab. The Ethos Lab, as many of you are calling it. <laughs> uh, we gotta get building that thing today. We gotta get it up and operational. After all, without our lab, how are we gonna explain all the mysteries of the Minecraft universe? Oh, I know what you might be thinking. Etho, come on. Minecraft's over 10 years old. There's no mystery left in this game. You would think that. But then, can you explain to me? How did I make the llamas walk around Sandy City? You can't, no. Before today, you probably didn't even know cracked nether bricks existed. There's mysteries out there, guys. We gotta discover them. We gotta, we gotta explain them. We gotta, we gotta see all the craziness. And the lab is gonna allow us to do it. I mean, look at that, guys. Can you explain that? <laughs> I could probably explain it to you, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm going I'm to leave that as a little puzzle for you guys. Now, before we get to building our lab, we got to clear out a massive area in that mountain, hollow it out, uh, which got me wondering about the respawn anchor. Now, speed mining has been the fastest way of mining in this game for the longest time. Technically, TNT is faster if you have the TNT. Generally, for TNT to be faster, you need to either dupe the sand or dupe the TNT, which is not something we do in our Let's Play here. So we need to try respawn anchors. So these emit a massive explosion, and they should be faster than speed mining if you can survive it. So we got blast protection pretty much maxed out here. I want to see how much damage this actually does. And we're going to try have our shield equipped to take the blast as we right-click this thing. You ready for it? I don't know if we can do that. Well, it's survivable. <laughs> Just barely, though. Oh, snappers, we might be onto something here, actually. I wasn't sure at first, but I've done a bit more testing, and this might be a game-changer idea. <laughs> so... The cool thing about respawn anchors is they're kind of farmable, right? You get the crying obsidian from the piglin bartering and the glowstone from villager trading. So you can acquire them fairly easily and you need glowstone to activate them. Uh, we got to clear out this room. This is where we're going to be putting our block breaking lab. We got to go about 15 to 20 blocks up in this area, which is a fair bit of land to clear, right? So here is what I've kind of figured out. Still refining the idea a bit, but I think... 
We go respawn anchor, dirt, respawn anchor, dirt, respawn anchor, all the way up to as high as you want to go. So here's the secret sauce to it. We're going to put an anchor on the top. This will block the explosion from really hitting us. And the cool thing is, as we go down, the anvil falls with us. <laughs> so I think this is all we got to do. So we right click the glowstone, and then we right click the anchor. And we took like no damage. I got a fire resist on, I got resistance beacon and all that stuff at the moment. Uh, but they're not really necessary, I'm just trying to play it safe. Because I don't want to lose my stuff. But yeah, you just right click, go down, right click, go down, right click, go down. All the way down here. Now here, we could get hurt because I'm not above it. Let me be careful here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it clears out a decent amount of area. Uh, we might need to put it every block though, because it's leaving a bit more junk than I expected. Yeah, let's go again here, but we're going to place it every block this time. I think it'll work a lot better, actually. So, just solid anchors all the way up here. Oh, I don't have my shovel on me, because I'm <laughs> afraid I'm going to die here. Uh, another thing you can do with this as well, if you don't mind wasting some glowstone, is you can just hold right-click if you want to fill it up all the way. And then it pops. But that way you don't have to switch between your items. Oh, oh. Still a little nervous. <laughs> oh, it's so cool, though. Isn't it? I think that's so awesome. Anvil's still okay. Gotta keep an eye on it. Oh, I'm stuck on something here. I gotta figure out how to center better. Because the, the main thing I waste time on is trying to get back on the anvil here. Kind of pushes you away as you go down. Maybe I gotta jump every time. Oh, I'm out of glowstone. But yeah, look how much bigger this hole is. You gotta do it every block, I guess. Even though that seems to work, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to mine most of this out manually still, because <laughs> uh, we don't have a good gold farm. And that was my only stack of respawn anchors, so we're out. Very much mining later. And check it out, we got a massive room cleared out. Oh, look at all this space. Think of all the things we could do with all this space. This is perfect. I just got a whole bunch of stone and we have a place to put it now. With that, I think we're ready to get started building the very first room of our new lab project. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, so I tried to jot down a couple notes here to help organize what we're going to be putting in this block breaking room. So if it's related to block breaking, ideally we'll want to put it in this room like haste one, haste two beacons affect your mining speed. So that's related to block breaking, right? So somewhere in this room, we want to set up a haste one and haste two beacon that we can control and turn on and off. Uh, someone reminded me of this last episode, actually, I totally forgot conduit power gives you like a haste one effect, I believe when you're underwater. I don't know, we're gonna have to test that out. But uh, we're gonna want to conduit in this room as well. And a whole bunch of other things here. So if you missed last episode, the short version of this is we're trying to build a lab, but rather than fill in the rooms of that lab with like uh, machines that are purely decorative that don't do anything, we're going to use the game as content for deciding what we put in our rooms. And we're going to try to arrange them in a way that looks nice and is presentable and interactive. Last episode, we got started on the mining speed timer. I just added a couple lights above it to represent seconds. The bottom row is for tenths of seconds. So if we're breaking obsidian, something that takes a bit longer, we'll be able to uh, hopefully measure that still. <laughs> but yeah, this is going to be the main machine of this room, the most important thing. So we want that center of the room, front, front and center. And hello, creeper. You know, I can't find any coal in this mountain. I guess it doesn't generate this high up. <laughs> so I'm all out of torches. I can't light up this room. It's horrible. Um, yeah, so beacons, I'm thinking we're going to put above the timer to the left and the right. And the conduit up above in the middle. Uh, Elder Guardian's probably going to be up above us in the center of the room. And because this is going to be such a massive room, my plan is to add four columns to it. Uh, one over there, one there, one here, one here. They're going to go up to the ceiling and look like they're supporting the roof so it doesn't cave in on us, right? Um, the plan with this is blackstone columns. We're going to get some glass panes, blue ones here for color. And I want to try something out with this build. End rods are going to be used a lot, probably. Stack them like this in the middle. The panes don't connect to them. 
Ooh, yeah, check that out. So the other thing these columns do is they frame in our timer. Again, this is our centerpiece of the room. We want our eyes to focus on that. And these kind of work as a border by having them stick out a bit forward and also by being a different color, it makes our eyes attracted more to the center here. The other thing that we should do is uh, lighten up that timer. It's like gray concrete, black stone, basalt. Let's try use some of these other colors we have in mind for the our build palette here. I think we're gonna go for Acacia. It's close in color to the lamps. And I think we're gonna be speeding through most of the building this episode. I mostly just wanna show you guys why we're doing stuff, not actually the building itself. Basalt door frame? I don't think so. Nope, we're going for red terracotta. So the formula I used to use when building is I would pick three, maybe four blocks, different colors, and then those are the only blocks I would use in the build. And that works fine on a small scale, but if you're doing a big room like this, you want like a few different colors and then lots of different shades within those colors. So we're not just having red terracotta, we're having crimson wood mixed in, different oranges and stuff, and kind of fade between the things. You know, this happens to me every time I build something, it's like, oh, I'm okay with it. And then I start second guessing myself a little bit. Like, is it too much detail? Oh, it might be too much detail. Might be a bit too chaotic, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we gotta drop off a few things at the man cave and also pick up a few things. So if you guys don't know, I'm storing a lot of my like stone and cobblestone over here now. <laughs> it's just uh, plop down a bunch of barrels and just fill them up. This guy, he's making a run for it again. I cannot get him to stay put. I think I'm gonna make him a special little area or something. Let's just put a composter here. Maybe he'll go to that. Oh, he's going to it. He's going to it. Locked in. Got to get our tools repaired. You know, it, it happens to all of us. You're mining, you're not paying attention, and bam, you break your diamond pick. It's the worst feeling ever. Nope, not anymore. Now you can break netherite picks. <laughs> Oh, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna be so sad when I do it. Yeah, so at first when I was designing this, I just did a rectangle shape for the timer and it looked okay, but it was very plain. So I went back and I've added a woohoo at the top there. And that just makes it a bit more interesting, I think. And you can see we got the most acacia in the center. Again, that's to help focus our eyes on the center. And there's a little bit less on the sides. And also the center is the biggest portion of the thing. But yeah, we are on number two of our list here, block hardness stash. So we have a machine to figure out how fast we can mine blocks. We need we need the blocks now. So we're gonna have in these spaces here a stash of all the blocks in the game. Ideally, I don't know if we're actually gonna get to doing that, but we'd probably want a, a stack or at least four blocks of each thing in these chests and hopefully name them according to their hardness level. Um, so we could either put chests here, barrels, but I'm thinking we actually go for shulker boxes, red ones. It's a little bit more expensive though, unfortunately, <laughs> but I think it's gonna look way better. All right, everybody. So we're gonna do a building montage now while I talk about some of the feedback we got on the last episode and whoo, over 4,500 comments, guys. That's a lot of opinions. <laughs> got some great uh, feedback. So thank you for that, guys. Um, uh, it's very useful to see some of the thoughts uh, about it. So yeah, it is a very polarizing idea, it seems. Some of you are really in favor of me doing this project, and some of you seem to be not so much in favor of it. Some valid criticism got brought up that I hadn't thought about, actually. So I've taken that in, I'm, and I think it might adjust how we do this project a little bit. But uh, also, I just want to say we'll probably roll with it for a few episodes and just see if you guys like it or not, because it's hard to judge if you like it or not. Even I don't know what we're doing exactly until we actually just get down and start building it like we are today. So yeah, I think once we make a little bit of progress on it, I'll check in with you guys again and see if the thoughts are the same or if they've changed at all and then uh, figure out what to do from there. Oh, snappers. All right, everybody. Well, I've been building like an absolute madman here for the last few hours and whew, this is a big room. <laughs> this is a crazy room. I don't think most of the rooms we do in this project are going to be quite so big and complicated. This one's sort of special, I think. But uh, man, I have been having an absolute blast working on this. This is unlike anything I've ever done before. <laughs> and uh, I think it's turning out pretty good. The, the colors are a little crazy and everything, but I, I'm liking it, actually. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Anyways, as you guys can see, this room is fairly busy. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So I'm going to try to give you a tour now and sort of point out what the stuff is, what it does, and what we need to do with this still. Uh, I'll start off by saying I ran out of time. <laughs> There's supposed to be like some side wings onto this still, and I didn't get to that. Uh, which is probably good, though, because if you guys think of something I forgot here, we'll still be able to add it pretty easy. Um, also, yeah, we got this bridge over here, which is kind of cool. But there's an area underneath, which is also unfinished. I'm planning on putting like a glass dome here uh, with an exhibit in somewhere around here. That way we can still look out and see the cool scenery here, um, which I think will be good. But yeah, we added another column like we had the original four. And then besides these ones, I added another one so we could put a staircase between. So you go up the staircase. Did you see him? I saw him. He's over here. Oh, he can't get to us, though. Whew. <laughs> so we'll probably have a door that leads to the facility over here. We also can then go across the bridge and get a pretty good view, good overview of the room here. So you can see the beacons nice and easy from here. Uh, you'll notice I made the middle area a little bit brighter red, and then the sides are the crimson stem a bit darker, and it just kind of makes the center more important, I guess. Uh, this bridge is uh, just acacia trap doors. We've got some end rods in here. Kind of feels like we got some wiring running under metal grating is what I was trying to go for. And then chains is railing. A um, couple lanterns and stuff. Again, we'll probably have another door here to lead to the facility. Now, I want to clarify something here. When you guys look at this, you're probably like, Etho, I thought you were building a lab. I was expecting quartz and white concrete, bright colors, clean cuts, uh, typical lab stuff, right? <laughs> And I went for more of a grungy, dark-themed uh, thing here. So just to sort of explain that, we're splitting the project into two main areas. We have the wiki entries. That's what this is. These are going to be, in general, darker-themed, more grungy-looking. Um, but it'll depend on what we're putting in the room. Like, if we have something involving water, it'll probably be aqua-themed. Or if we're doing something with plants, it'll probably be plants, nature-themed, you know? But the other part of the project is going to be the facility, the support thing that connects all our rooms together and provides transportation and anything else we might need, right? That will be the typical lab, super clean, bright white colors and stuff, and we'll have a clear distinction between the two. Yeah, so the reason we did this room first, the block breaking room, was because I figured it'd be one of the most complicated ones to do, and if we could get through it... We could probably do any of them because <laughs> uh, the challenging part about this one is we have to combine so many different factors together because many different things affect your mining speed and uh, be able to test them in different combinations and see the result. So, yeah, we got our mining thing here. We can see what happens when we mine things in water, how it slows us down. Also, mining stuff floating in the air slows us down. So we got the ladder to keep us suspended. We can test that out. And when we break the first block here, it starts the timer, which I still need to finish because it's not working. <laughs> the seconds aren't doing anything at the moment. Uh, also, I don't have the stop uh, working at the moment, so it just keeps going when we get to the last one. But it's supposed to stop when we mine uh, the five blocks here, and then you can see the total time based on all the different factors combined together. So another one of the factors is what block you're breaking. So we're going to have all the different blocks here, ideally, in a perfect world. Um, also, what tool we're using really affects our mining speed. So we'll have a stash of all the different tools here, from wood, stone, iron, diamond, netherite to gold. Slowest to fastest. And we want the unenchanted version, but also efficiency 1 through 5. Um, so that'll take a little bit to get together. We got a few of them here. Um, and then there's axes, swords. We'll want to get shears. You can put efficiency on shears. And also, we need hose in here too. And I think that'll cover all the tools. If I'm forgetting something, let me know because it's hard to keep track of all this stuff. <laughs> The other thing that affects our mining speed, though, is haste beacons, right? So we'll have some controls over here. We can turn our beacons on and off. We got the numbers there to represent if it's haste 1 or haste 2. So now if we flick this one, we'll get haste 1. That's back on. And we also had to put it close enough to this room 
so that we actually get the effect like if it was I think if we stand over here we're too far away <laughs> so that was another challenging thing to consider and we can mix and match them and see the effect but also conduit power affects mining speed so we need to be able to turn that on and off so if we have the water out here get the water we sit in the water you can see I think I got it off at the moment so we're not getting the conduit power up here but if we flick this on we just uh, push a a block into the three by three by three water there and that shuts it off but if we retract it lights uh, turn on when the conduit power is active and now when we go in the water here we have conduit power and the final thing we have in this room is the cage in the middle for the elder guardian so we can get his mining fatigue effect we'll have a switch to drop him down we'll probably put a slime block there so he'll fall down and bounce around for a bit and then give it to us and then when we shut off the switch we need to somehow get him out of there and go up a bubble elevator to the top of the mountain if you're over 50 blocks away from him you don't get the effect and that's why i built this around y 180 or so so we have a bit of leeway where we can store him up there and we won't get the effect um but i'm not sure how we're doing all that just yet and when we drop them down the lights there will turn on as well and that's the kind of plan with that so how did we do here? Well, let's check out our list. We kind of worked on these six things and we're missing just a few of them. These are the, a lot easier to do than these ones though. So that's why I saved them for last. Ghost blocks, I don't know if we need to add that into this room. Maybe that would go into the a bug room or something. But uh, anyways, unfortunately I did kind of mismanage my time a little bit today and spent too long building there. But we got a good start on the project. Hopefully it gives you a better idea of what we're doing. And like I said before, we're only going to be working on it like 20 to 40% of our time. I just spent a full episode on it today because it's a new thing. Uh, but next episode, we're probably going to be working on farms and we'll probably do a little bit on it. We'll see how it goes. Here's the comment of the day. It says, I think this idea is really cool and has a lot of potential. The only thing I'm a little worried about is the scope. This project is just so huge. That being said, this is not the first time I've been skeptical of a project idea. When you proposed the Nexus so many years ago, it sounded insane to me, but you finished it and it's so impressive. I think it will be fun discovering and recording all the game mechanics, world generation, building te techniques, etc. And I know that if anyone could do it, it's you. Yeah, so last episode, I laid out the ultimate goal of uh, storing all the information in this game in that lab. <laughs> I want to just clarify, that's the ultimate goal. It's actually probably impossible to do that. I'm just, I'm just saying, we're gonna go and work on it as long as it, we're having fun with it. If I'm enjoying it and you guys are enjoying it, we'll keep working on it. But if it gets boring or whatever, that's it, we're done, sort of thing. Yeah, kind of my idea with the project is it's almost like we're building a base, right? Uh, except it has a purpose to it, <laughs> not just like building stuff for the sake of building it. Um, the thing about this game is like, yeah, you can build, make farms and farms serve a purpose, right? Well, technically they don't. They just get you resources. If you don't actually use those resources, farming in this game is kind of pointless. If you're just building in this game and the buildings don't do anything, they're kind of pointless. So I thought this would be a good way of combining like building with a purpose and... Also, the building is going to be extremely expensive, so it's going to encourage us to build more farms in our world and uh, do things that we don't normally do in our world because the scope of the project is the whole game. So that's kind of the whole idea behind the project. And yeah, we need to get stuff. <laughs> I used our last beacons today, so we got to get a wither skeleton farm set up and uh, yeah, stuff like that, right? Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. Until the next one, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.